Good morning and welcome, Narberth Presbyterian Church family and friends. Here we are at the end of June. Where did that month go? I think along with March, April, and May, it just virtually flew away. The state has moved into the green zone, meaning that a number of things are now possible for us, even as we remain masked in public, out of love for our neighbor and care for ourselves. Our safety and security team are working on a plan for our short and longer term future here at the church. Our priority is the safety of all the precious people who move in and out of this building, and good planning can take time. By now, you should have received a communication concerning a plan for small group meetings to resume. Included is a congregational survey covering your areas of concern and your hopes for in-person gatherings. Your prompt input will be greatly helpful to the team. Today we finish up a 10-week sermon series on the Lord's Prayer. Next week, we'll begin a new series of messages on the fruit of the Spirit, God's plan for changing the world. We'll be exploring the idea that God is sending his servant people, the church, into the world as those who are becoming like Christ, embodying the presence and character of Jesus to and for others. Next week, we'll also have the joy of celebrating communion, so please be sure to have some bread and juice on hand for that beautiful moment with the Lord and with each other. This morning, Diane Chen wraps up her Zoom class study of the Book of Revelation. It's been an excellent experience, and we want to thank Diane, who is also helping to lead worship today, as Steve has been enjoying some R&R this week. So next Sunday at 11 a.m., Mark Wenger will take up the reins of teaching and engage a study of the longest letter Paul wrote, the Book of Romans, to the Christians in that city and to all of us ever since. All are welcome to join the Zoom class for what is sure to be a good time in scripture and in visual community. Please check out the newsletter that Karen has prepared. It contains a wealth of information about our lively congregation and the wider community. A big thank you to all the children and families who participated in VBC Takeout. Ms. Danielle wants to say a big thank you to all the volunteers who helped in so many ways to make this experience really delicious. Our week was full of God's amazing love with 145 children participating. God is good, and we're thankful for the unique way he brought us together for VBC Takeout. Today, thanks to a few of our gifted youth and children, we have a treat. They have helped to create the Lord's Prayer through artwork, and we'll be able to see this beautiful creation directly following the children's message with Miss Danielle. You won't want to miss it. As we think of those we're remembering in prayer, we begin with a celebration. Chaz Howard has been named the University of Pennsylvania's first vice president for social equity and community. Chaz has been serving at Penn as university chaplain since 2008, ministering to students, staff, faculty, and administrators. We pray the Lord's continued blessing on Chaz, Leah, and their family as he steps into his new role, helps to define it, and as he helps to nurture two key biblical themes, those of social equity and healthy community there on the Penn campus. Another potential cause for rejoicing concerns Helga Sauter, who, although she is asymptomatic, has been in isolation Helga calls it incarceration, due to testing positive for COVID. Helga was retested this week, and if found to be negative, should be returning to her apartment quite soon. We continue to pray for Harold Heller, who is re still recovering following hip surgery. And this past Wednesday afternoon, Robin Elwell, a longtime member of NPC, who's been living in care in the Quakertown area 
for a number of years, quietly slipped into eternity, and became one of the saints triumphant. Robin met the Lord in a life-changing way through the people of this congregation, and we became her family. Through the years, Robin never stopped thanking God for his provision for her through all of us. Our condolences go out to Robin's brother, Jim, and his three children, Bill, Sherry, and Dawn. We'll celebrate the 4th of July in new ways, different ways this year, because of COVID-induced constraints and the open wound of racial realities. Freedom is a central focus for most, if not all of us. And it is certainly a central focus of the scripture. No matter what, we can celebrate and give thanks for that freedom which is sure and eternal because we who are Christians are free in Christ, whatever our earthly circumstances. And whatever measure of earthly freedom we enjoy, we should be proactive in spreading that blessing to everyone on the face of this earth. So let's remember to pray this week for each other, our communities, our country and its leaders, and our wider world. Eternal God is our creator and our king. God loves all people and wants all people to be free. Before we ever gave God a thought, God gave his son to demonstrate that love and make possible our freedom from sin and death. With this in mind, with gratitude to the God who reaches out to us before we're ever aware of our need or of the Lord, Let's hear our call to worship, which comes to us today from the Kowalski family. <laughs> 